Everyone has a story to tell. It's my mission to tell it. Unscripted, unedited, we are on the record. Hi everyone, I'm Serena Fazan and welcome to a very special On the Record, On the Road, a show where creativity and passion collide. <laughs> Did you not love that? <laughs> Here we are at the Michael Murphy Gallery with the Michael Murphy. You have the yes. longest standing gallery in, in the Tampa, Tampa Bay now. area. Mm -hmm. And then we have Trevor Stickman Stickle. Sickle, Stickle. How could I screw that up? <laughs> stick okay. is, it I'm doesn't just, matter as long as I got Stick Man. That's yeah, right. Yeah, in the middle. I'm just don't call me late for dinner. Right. <laughs> Traveling all the way from Canada to be here with your amazing art. So, Michael, let's start with you. What does it mean having the Stick Man here? Well, we're very lucky because I was exposed to his work, well, I don't know, six or seven months ago and we wanted to do something with him and so we were able to put this show together by the caliber of the workmanship along with the imagery is just it was such a great combination you don't really see this kind of talent in this type of image so it's really we're very lucky to have this and have him here in tampa having traveled long I we, just, we found out we were talking he's actually gonna it took him longer to get here than he's gonna be here uh, so um, well we are thankful to have you and honestly just around surrounded by this art it's making my heart skip an extra beat because the images are so powerful you said about 24 pieces here yeah and tell us tell us about your artwork um well it it, it comes from um uh, you know from, from an early age and, and the neighborhood i lived in it was uh you know it was surrounded by music and um, you know, I always like to say that, um, you, you know, when I, when I was a kid, a lot of these figures were like mythological figures to us, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't have the internet, we mm -hmm. couldn't verify stuff, so there were just like schoolyard rumors of, you know, what Alice Cooper did on stage mm -hmm. last night. So they were, um, they, they were like comic book characters sort of thing. So it kind of started from that, and, and music in my whole neighborhood was just ingrained in us, and it never really left me. And then, you know, as, as I got older, I... Um, I started drawing from a really young age uh, and it just stuck with me. I, I just never really gave it up. And then the two kind of combined themselves and, and you know, it, it became my um, contribution to the, to the rock and roll world, a little bit more, I would say. And it is music, yeah. right? It is, it is really the music that right. fuels so much of your art, right. of your artwork. What do you think, and clearly we can see, I mean, art is, your art's amazing. What, why do you feel you stick out, Stickman? Oh, I don't. No, <laughs> no uh, I, I think it's just my approach to it. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that will, will do music-based stuff. Um, my, my approach was a little bit different where a lot of people might paint a, a Jimi Hendrix. Um, and, and I am a realism artist uh, at heart. But I, over the years, I've become a really big fan of street art and pop art and um, some of my influences on the art world um, what I decided to do that I don't know anybody else that does is take some of that realism but combine it with other aspects of art. So you'll see some like pop art behind realism, you'll see street art, impressionism, expressionism. Um, so it's that combination of realism and, and other aspects. So I get to, I'm in a unique position where I get to uh, pay homage to my musical heroes mm -hmm. but also with some of my artistic heroes as well. And, um, you know, I think as the kids would call today, a mashup. <laughs> and of course, yes, and we have to ask you who some of your musical her heroes are. But before we get to that, Michael, you know, all humility aside, again, longest standing gallery and very prominent gallery here in the Bay Area. What does it take for an artist to be featured in your gallery? And many times it's the first of their tour. I know in this case, you're not the first of a tour, but many times they're the first. But well, we are the first to show the Taylor Swift image. Mm. So that just came out, that's new. So we have that. And, and, and the Jimi Hendrix. And the Jimi Hendrix is new. Yeah. So well, we that, could newer, go, that yeah. could mean goosebumps. Right, so. That's a sense you know, of pride. We do get new things. So, <laughs> yeah. he, you know, when he's not here, he's actually working to make this art. But yeah. um, what we look for in, in all of our artists, we try to bring art from um, other places to Tampa, or Tampa Bay. And it's so that there's, there's great venues now for the local artists. I mean, Tampa Bay has changed so dramatically over the past, even five years, as you know, 
And so there's lots of venues now for local artists to show and be um, exhibited. So we try to bring things into the Bay Area that don't normally come through here. So each show is very different from the show before. We go from something like this to the abstract show we just had from an artist from New York. We have you know a show coming up of another type. So every show we try to maybe reach out to a different audience because somebody who might like this and come in will be on our mailing list and we can educate them about something else or vice versa. Someone mm -hmm. who came for some other show and now can see this and understand. And if you look at this, there is that both that realism and that what I would say street art or that background you see with the number nine behind you. You know, there's the imagery behind it and yet you've got that very forward piece that's very pop art. You know, the Taylor Swift, there almost looks like a graffiti wall behind her in that piece. So how those mix is what makes this art really interesting. It's not just a straight on image of, an, of a musician. Well, I want to expand on art and why it's so important. But before, before we do that, Stickman, turning it back to you, this show is Against the Wall. What is behind the name of Against the Wall? Um, so uh, a, a few years ago, uh, you know, after COVID, uh, um, Went through a, a, a health scare, and, and, and you know my partner gave me a kidney a couple of years ago. Um, Can we hold on to that for just one moment? His <laughs> partner, yes, you heard correctly, yeah. gave uh, him yeah. a kidney. Gave yeah. him a kidney. And at the same time, we were going through like a whole rebirth of of my art as well. You know, I was in a, kind of a the art world's got all these uh, little little worlds within it, um, and there was a transition from maybe one to another. A little bit of transition in the artwork, um, so there was a, a lot, of, like a very transitory period that we were going through. And when you go off, uh, in our case, off on our own a little bit and being introduced to new worlds and stuff, we kind of felt like our backs were against the wall a little bit. And uh, so that's kind of where it came from. Against the wall. Mm. Yeah. And what it means? And also, they do get hung against the wall. Yeah, so. they do get hung. I, mean, I love this guy's sense of humor. <laughs> you know. And if you'll notice, it's a little bit of Italian in him too, <laughs> right? Because you, you're like me. Pretty, I'm pretty like, fidgety. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we'll, we'll, blame the, we'll blame the we'll blame the side for that. <laughs> so, of the pieces that you have brought here, yeah. do you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? Um, I would say the Jimi Hendrix piece. Um, it, it comes from a a pretty deep place. Uh, lost a friend a few months back, and oh, and that uh, that piece um, kind of derived from from that. Um, so it's meaningful. Um, it, it also helps me exhibit one of the things I try to do is um, my ring is getting stuck in my pocket. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Listen again. <laughs> we, we've got to move. We can't stand still. Uh, what, one of the things I try to do is not just always paint just rock and roll, but the periphery of it. So. Uh, there's a lot of things I consider in the rock and roll world that aren't just necessarily a rock star. Um, things like Jack Daniels, leather jackets, you know, it's the, it lives in that rock world. And one of them is Harley Davidson. So I've been planning or, or playing with an idea of bringing Harley Davidson into the world as well. Um, and so when I decided that I was going to do that um, on, on, the, on the way to this funeral, um, it was kind of like where that piece was birthed. And mm -hmm. when I started doing research, I I came across some images of Jimi Hendrix on an old pan head, and um, it kind of punched me in the mouth because the the guy that we laid to rest the day that was born, our first engagement, our first bonding experience was over Jimi Hendrix. Oh my gosh! So yeah, a lot of the, it kind of came full circle, and uh, it helped me not only do the rock star part but the periphery part of the, that rock world, while paying homage to a friend. So is uh, it kind of hit on all levels? So you know what? You know, with you sharing that story. For me, I feel so blessed to be able to yeah. work in a profession where we can share stories and then we hear, yeah. we hear these stories of connection. And Michael, turning it back to you, you know, here at RHS TV, we're connecting Tampa Bay to the world. And it gives me such, I have such a huge grin on my face because Tampa has grown significantly. To, yes. have, to have an art like this and featuring artists like the stick man, you like how you, you know, I mean, how does that show the growth of Tampa as well? Well, I think that Tampa's becoming a very mature city very quickly, and so it allows us to expand 
we can bring a lot of things to Tampa, but Tampa also has to support it. Obviously, we're in business. So as much as I would love to go out and just have this sort of esoteric, just for me mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I have to pay rent and rent Tico <laughs> and you know, all the bills. Yeah. So it has to also be something that people can relate to. And so we're constantly going that back and forth. And what makes this so interesting is that you can walk in and just look at it and yes. go, I love this. You can just, on a very visceral level, just like the imagery without knowing anything about it. And then you learn the background and where it came from, what it means, and all of that, and it just means more to you. So you don't have to really, you know, there's a, a great book that says, you know, I don't know anything about art, and the subtitle is, I know what I like, so you know more than you think. Mm. So it is about that. You know, we're a gallery that wants to produce art that you wake up in the morning or go home at night and you love. You know, I don't really want art that makes you wonder why we exist in the world. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the world does a great job of beating us up every day. <laughs> so when you go home, I think yeah. in your home, you should have things that you love. And that's what this is. I mean, I can, you know, I'm learning more and more. You know, when we first bring a show in, we know a lot. But as we get to talk to the artists and we learn these background stories, you know, you start learning more, and then it becomes like, oh, this is my new favorite. Like, this is my new favorite. You know, I feel like I'm dating sometimes. Like, oh, this is my new favorite. Oh, no, this is my new favorite. This no, is this not is dating my... in America. Yes, like, oh. I know. Okay, no, that's good. But, so, um, but, but no, yes, you, I mean, I love the, I mean, learning about this makes it so interesting. And yeah. back to, you know, what you were saying, your images are so powerful, like so much of the, the stars you like to portray. Have you, who are, I, who are your favorite artists, and have you been commissioned by one of your uh, favorite music stars yet? So favorite artist or when music I say star? Yet, uh, yeah. Okay, musician. Both. a musician. I was saying, music, um, because you're, you're, you're there's a, so much yeah. music you I know, am behind a, your. I'm a giant Rolling Stones fan. Mm -hmm. um, I had a dog named Jagger. I'm oh, a, I'm a David Bowie fan. I have a dog named Bowie. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, huge Stones guy. Um, uh, more contemporary. Uh, I really like uh, Tool. Um, a lot, some of the, a lot of the classic stuff, like Z a huge Zeppelin, Hendrix, um, a little bit of everything through every mm -hmm. uh, genre. Um, I, if, <laughs> I'm also into fashion, so like the kind of the flashier <laughs> they are, like oh, I you know, noticed you, the Louboutins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed the Louboutins. The, the, you know, especially <laughs> painting. The flashy, the, the flashier they are with painting, the 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 more fun they are. So if so. you have to say one, is there is there. Yeah, it's got to be the stones. It's, it's, it's got to be the stones. It's it's got it's, it's, yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to count tattoos, it's the stones. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been such a pleasure. And yeah. there's so much more to learn about you. And that's yeah. why we encourage people to visit both of your social media, both mm -hmm. of your websites. And I would say to the audience also, of course, to visit RHS TV. We are um, on every single platform. So please download our free app, once again, RHS TV, and share these wonderful stories on, you know, I'm on every social media platform as well. And we so appreciate both of you taking the time and joining us on the well, record. Thank you very much for yeah. coming in and doing this today. Yeah. Love we it. it. <laughs> and I thank you both for supporting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>